welcome to the FabLite Live Demo. I'm your FabLite expert, John, and whether you're just checking out our machines or you've just got your own brand new FabLite and want to learn more, this video is for you. In this video, we're going to give you an overview of how we use our FabLite and how we process projects for flat sheet metal parts and tube parts. If you want to learn more about our FabLite machines, visit our website to download our product guide or to get in touch with one of our FabLite experts. If you want to learn more about our FabGrader software or our SolidWorks plugin, check out our channel to see the full tutorials for those. If you want to see more of this kind of content, give us a thumbs up and let us know it's useful, and subscribe to our channel as we release more tutorial videos. Have an idea for a video or want to see how something is done on FabGrader or on a FabLite? Let us know in the comments. Let's jump right in. The first thing we're going to do is get ready to cut a flat sheet part. To do that, we'll open this door and pull out the easy load drawer from inside the machine. It's a 25 inch by 50 inch bed, and we designed it this way so one person can load up their sheet. Because our machine is capable of cutting tubes and sheets, we often get asked, what does it take to switch between the two modes? So I'll go ahead and show you. To move into the sheet cutting mode, we simply push the drawer back into the machine and let it fall into the first detent. If we push the drawer all the way to the back of the machine, you are then in tube cutting mode. So we'll do that again to really highlight how easy it is to switch. We pull the drawer and we let it fall into the first detent on the slides for this sheet cutting mode. And then we push it all the way to the back of the machine for the tube cutting mode. Literally seconds to switch and now you've got two fiber laser machines in the same 21 square foot footprint. Double the capabilities, half the space. Today, we're gonna to be cutting a part out of 1 8 inch cold rolled steel. And you can see, I've already cut out a few sample parts, but we're gonna cut another one here in just a bit. All you need to do to load this sheet into your drawer is to place your sheet so that these tabs on the left-hand side of the bed can grab onto it. These screw down tabs perform two functions. One, they hold on to your materials so that your sheet is not moving around during the cutting process to hold on to the five thousandths of an inch accuracy. And two, they ground your material so that the capacitive height sensor can detect the surface of your sheet so that your laser is in focus at all times, regardless if there is a bend in the sheet from being stored vertically. All of our machines come with these sawtooth slats that you see here but we can also replace them with a honeycomb bed for cutting small, intricate parts on your machine. To put our machine in the sheet cutting mode, we're just going to push the drawer back into the machine and allow it to fall into the first detent again, and we're ready to cut. Let's take a look at the HMI panel, as well as the inside of the machine. First, we're gonna go to a new job, and we've got jobs loaded up that were created in our FabCreator software. And that's the great thing about our machine. You don't have to be a laser cutting expert to work on it. The database you get with your machine is the same one you get with your FabCreator software. So we're gonna select this bracket sample here. And here are our process parameters from our machine database that match the material you selected in FabCreator. For this part, we're only doing a cut, but if you were doing a raster or an engraving, you would also see the parameters listed below. If we click the edit button on the right hand side, we can actually take a look at all of the process parameters we have listed for this material. You could edit these parameters here if you wanted, but again, all of these parameters have been specifically selected for this material and this thickness by our applications team for optimized cutting. Additionally, if you decided you wanted to go ahead and change a parameter and test it out, you can make your changes and then select either use temporary to erase the changes after your next cut or accept to create a custom parameter. If at any point you decide you want to change the parameter back to the factory default, you can simply click the button in the top right corner to do so. We're going to go back and preview this file to make sure we're cutting the right part. And we can also see this part was processed through FabCreator to include a tab so that it doesn't fall through after being cut. Next, we can head over to the jog screen, and this is really helpful if you're cutting into a sheet like this 
that already has several cutouts and you want to get the most material out of this as possible. It's hard to see on this camera, but when you look underneath the cutting head, there is a red laser beam spot that helps you visualize the position of the cutting head as we move around this sheet. To move around it, you simply drag one of these blue flags on the touchscreen of your machine to send the cutting head to an approximate area of where we want it to be cut. If you want to be a little more precise, you can double tap one of these flags and a keypad will appear so that you can specify the distance from the origin, which is the bottom left corner of the bed, that you want the cutting head to be at. Today, we're just going to go back to the origin. If you wanted to, you could also dry run a job. This simply means that the machine will perform all of the motions of cutting your part without the power and the assist gas being pushed through. This is helpful to get an estimate for the amount of time it will take to run a job or to see if your part will cut within the space that is available. All you need to do is tap drive run to turn it on. We're going to go ahead and run the job and see how it turns out inside the machine. Here, we can see the laser cutting head touching down and detecting the surface of the material with the capacitive height sensor to ensure the focus is correct. Then, the machine will begin cutting the part out, and we can see in the bottom right corner, this job ends up taking a little less than one minute to complete. Let's take a look at the part, and we can see it's still being held in the sheet. You can see all the excess material has dropped out cleanly, and the part is ready to go. We can easily pull this part out by wiggling it to break the tab, which is only five thousandths of an inch thick, and you can see that right here. Next, we're going to switch the machine over to prepare it for tube cutting. Typically with fiber laser machines, you either need to buy a separate machine to cut tubes, which can cost upwards of a quarter of a million dollars, or you can have a normal sheet metal laser and you can cut tubes using an attachment. But that attachment needs to be installed or removed anytime you want to switch between the two modes. As I showed you before, all we need to do is push this drawer all the way to the back of the machine. On the left hand side of our machine, we have our drive chuck, and then on the right hand side of the machine, we have our idler. We can move the idler over to around where we expect the end of the tube to be. For our machine, there's about an inch of waste on either side of the tube where both the drive chuck and the idler grab onto the material. We can also load up tubes up to 52 inches and two inches round, square, and rectangular tubes. Today, we're going to be cutting this stainless steel one and a half inch square tube with a 1 16th inch wall thickness. If we take a look at the camera on the right, you can see that all I need to do is lift this lever and tighten down the jaws with this screw here. We can do the same on the idler side as well, and we also need to pull out the pins before we start our cut. If these locking pins are not disengaged, don't worry. The machine will remind you if they are before you start your job. To load the tube job, it's very similar to loading up sheet parts, but our preview shows a 3D version of the tube to ensure we're cutting the right part. In addition, if we head over to our jog screen, we see it's a little different here too where you only have one blue flag to jog along the length of the tube. You also see here that we have this gray bar that shows you the location of the idler. If we try to move the cutting head past the idler location, you'll get a warning that it's not possible. We're going to go ahead and run the job. And again, the laser will touch down to the tube and use the capacitive height sensor to detect the surface of the tube. And then it will start the cut. As you can see, when we go around corners, we coordinate the motion of the chuck with the laser cutting head. Also notice that the laser cutting head is always perpendicular to the surface of the tube. Our Fab Creator software is really great too, because you don't have to worry about tabbing your parts at all. These parts are automatically tabbed to make sure it doesn't drop during the cutting process. To get this part out, all we need to do is remove the tube from the machine and then find a surface to do some percussive engineering and break the tabs we have here. And that's it. To recap, switching between tube and sheet cutting modes only takes seconds. Jogging around your material is great for sheets that already have a lot of parts cut out, but you want to use up as much as possible. 
tube cutting and loading is just as easy as sheet cutting. Remember, if you want to learn more about our FabCreator software or about our machines, head over to our YouTube page or our website. Use our Weldment library for standard tube profiles, and then add your own profiles as needed. Remember, cut right, cut with FabLite.